hopefully there's some editing in here because <laughs> if your brand and your feed don't excite you and you're not clicking with it and it doesn't speak to you start over so just being you yeah unless you're a jerk don't be yourself but <laughs> All right, all right. Hey, hey, what is going on, everybody? This is Roy Uwe, right, right? And welcome to episode 002 of Breaking Down Business. If you are new to this channel, we interview everyday business owners and hear how they break down their business from success, strategies, and tools to their struggles and hardships. So stay tuned all the way till the end because there are definitely amazing takeaways that you can learn and implement in your business today. So on today's episode, we have a very, very special guest as they all are very special. We have Susan Flaga with Sparrow Salon and S4E. Sparrow Salon is located in Logan Square here in Chicago, Illinois, as you know, obviously, duh. And uh, she also created this amazing hair cream called S4E that just recently launched June of 2021. And here we go. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Very yes. Good. Thank you for being here with us on this amazing, amazing day. So yes. Can you start us off with all of our viewers, watchers, and listeners? Can you give us a background about the company and how you started and where it is now? So Semi loaded question, but yes, give us a quick, quick background. Yeah, no problem. So, um, I opened my salon, Sparrow, which was kind of a platform for my product for my eventual launch of my brand in um, 2009. So, the salon is almost um, 13 years old. And um, almost immediately, I started working on developing a product line. And I'll fill in the in-between at some point during this conversation. Okay. But the hair cream, hair care for sensitive people is the tagline of the brand um, launched in June, 2021. Yes, yes. And so we're not going to get all into the details of the salon part, but like, how did you come up with this product? And you said right away, like when you opened up the salon, you were 80 doing some R and D. Yeah. So on this I cream. So totally. Um, I did all of the best research by doing everything the wrong way. First, the best learning tool. The best. <laughs> yes. And that's why we're all here. Let us learn from your. Learn from my mistakes, friends. Yes. Beautiful. So I, you know, I launched, I opened my salon and it, it was a wonderful experience and I got the business bug and I knew that I was meant to do more. So I started developing a product line and that product line ultimately turned into a skincare brand. Okay. And I'm telling you about this, not because it, necessarily relates to um the current brand the hair care line but i'm i, I want to bring it up because um one of the important things that i've learned on this journey is that you really have to do the best with what you have and what i had was a really successful salon Yes. And I had this platform to eventually create a hair care line, but I didn't see it. I, I was essentially like trying to take myself into a completely different industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I just want to make the point for anyone that might be watching and learning and developing their own brand that it's really important to look at what you already know, what you already have, who your potential audience might be, and really focus on that. Because wow. um, 
you know, I, I created a skin care product that was great. And a lot of people loved it. And a lot of people still email me trying to find it, but I didn't have a platform and I didn't have the leverage that I needed to like launch a product into the world and have it really take off because I was a hairstylist starting a skincare line. But that's how kind of, you know, that's, that's, uh, I always look at it too, almost like two folds, right? It's, it's just part of the journey. You know, uh, everyone has a different stage, right? In their business and in their life. And as they kind of go through this journey of the unknown, right? We don't know what's tomorrow or what's going to happen in an hour from now. Um, it's just, again, we're, we're waiting. And so again, if you take a look at it right now, just in general, social media has now really taken off. So just business in general and anyone who's creating a channel, or a product or a business, they now can get in front of millions of people within hours. Mm -hmm. So talk about platform in that sense, which is kind of crazy. So then again, tell us more on like how this product started, uh, evolved, uh, the formula, the research again, for anyone who's starting again, specifically maybe in, in certain products, like what was the R and D like? Okay. Well, <clears throat> okay. So I think of the journey that I just referenced was the greatest learning experience ever, right? So I always had this feeling that um, this the brand that I created needed to have a certain voice, right? Mm -hmm. It needed to be kind of weird and, and um, have a sense of humor and um, and also take care of people, right? Yes. Basically, it just describes myself. But <laughs> when you're a better creating, model, <laughs> yeah, creating a brand and you don't fully identify with it, if it's not clicking, then keep trying. Yes. Because if it doesn't speak to you and it doesn't have a point and it doesn't have a mission and a voice it's not going to speak to anyone else. So I had this realization along the way that, um, holy shit, what am I doing working on skincare? I need to do the best with what I have. Mm -hmm. I need to, um, start a hair care line. <laughs> <laughs> so obvious to everyone here, but, um, so I do want to reference, I had like a really well-timed book recommendation um, from, from a mentor of mine. Yes, please yeah. share. We, we yeah. love hearing book referrals, tips, tools, et cetera. So please yeah. do share. Well, this one that I was referencing that seemed kind of like a, like a self help -y book that I would have never picked up on my own was called Infinite Possibilities by Mike Dooley. Okay. And that was the one that really impressed upon me to look at what I actually did have as a platform to create my brand. And then I took the next logical step, which was start a hair care line. So anyway, um, one of the main points about my brand is that it's hair care for sensitive people. And after many, many years in the industry, I became really sensitized to the chemicals in hair color and yeah. ultimately like can't even tolerate any synthetic fragrance. So I realized that, that this was a phenomenon that, that was occurring with hairdressers all over the world. Being in the industry. Yeah. yeah. And, and no one was really, none of the big brands were really looking out for us in that way. So I was like, I can definitely create a professional quality line that doesn't have synthetic fragrance. And I also made sure that it was clinically tested to be safe for sensitive skin to just mm -hmm. really push the point. Um, Cause I know that when you put styling product in your hair, you're rolling around in your pillow all night. So there, there's where I developed the angle and the message and the caregiving of the brand. Yes. Um, and so your question was about how I went about. Yeah. 
Like, yeah, just the R and D. Like I'm thinking, like you're in your kitchen, like you know, watching, you know, all all the like Shark Tanks, you know, uh, uh, and the, the profit. And they're like, I started in my kitchen. I had X, Y, and Z, and all these different supplies, and I was cooking up a batch and testing it on my own hair. So I don't know if there's uh if it's like a very similar close story. Well, you know, give I, us that behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, I did have a lot of experience with. Uh, I took this whole intense course on cosmetic formulation and I was like making my own skincare and all of this, but I realized that my superpower is in like creating the voice and the mission of the Mm -hmm. brand. And I, you know, I also like love all of the design elements, but um, so I started the hunt to find a cosmetic chemist that could do this for me. Got it. Yeah. And that is a really, honestly, it's a difficult thing. You can Mm. kind of Google all you want, but the barrier to entry is really high. So um, it helps to make as many connections as possible and, and try to um, meet people that are, that are doing, that are making their own things and having things manufactured because it is really a word of mouth business, no matter how much you can find online, it's really hard to cold call a lab or a chemist. But ultimately I did find someone. But so again, for all the listeners out there, you you have to research, network, talk. So if you're not taking any actions, then you're not going to get to your destination is basically what I'm also hearing. And read. (laughs) <laughs> read a lot read, read books by by people that have the career that you want mm-hmm. and read books just about business because if it goes well you're gonna be a boss absolutely absolutely and so again going into that aspect of now you you found the specialist to kind of help you put what well, your idea in play right? I probably would have also made the very similar. Again, when I started the screen print company, like didn't even know a lick about it, right? I, you have to do a lot of research. You have to do a lot of testing, get getting in different products. Uh, what were now the next few steps after, like how long did it take from the R&D aspect to now actually having an, a product that you're selling? Um, there were probably about seven to 11 iterations of the product. Seven um, to 11 in a yeah. time frame. Can you give us, give or take, how um, long that kind of took? I think it was at least six months of, of um, creating samples for mm-hmm. me and minor tweaks and using it. And, um, you know, the first few were f- super far off. And my chemist said, if you liked the first thing, I would think there was a problem. (laughs) (laughs) It's really just, she has to pick a starting point based on what I'm saying I want. Right. And and there's, you're never going to get it on the first time ever. Um, So there were many iterations and then, and then we had it. You kind of have to have a strong opinion on what your final result should be and it passed I'm, I'm envisioning you having like a checklist and then you're like yep yeah i mean it was all it was all pretty intuitive though but um yeah, like please things- absolutely please tell because I, I love what is in because i know it's like all natural so tell us like the ingredients of of the product if you have it with you as well feel free to do a little show, just be like, this is the product and. Well, here's the hair cream. Yeah, see, beautiful. A white, then... soft, cosmetically elegant cream. The thing that makes it really exceptional is that um, it's moisturizing. And there are things like vitamin B and, and um, certain light butters in it that make it super moisturizing but it's also exceptional because for a cream it's really light and you can Mm -hmm. layer it 
And it really changes the game for people with really fine hair because they're not used to being able to layer a product and um, then, you know, not have their hair super weighed down. Um, so the feedback, it's in many salons across the country and the feedback is, is crazy good. Yes. And so for our, for our viewers and listeners out there, you just said something, you said it's where, where, where can we find and get your product? Well, you can get it at, um, sparrowforeveryone.com. Right. Um, and on the website, there's a list of stockists, but you can get it in um, salons all across the country and a few boutiques. Wow. So how, how were you able to get like a worldwide, get into other boutiques? Talk to us a little bit uh, about that process. Um, okay. So far in the game, Roy, it's all been 100% Instagram. Yes. Yes. I, I love the organicness. Yeah. I'm huge on the gram, the TikToks. Um, what, what was a, a basic strategy that you saw? Just so again, that's literally kind of like how I, I started, you know, in, in that sense was I got on, on Facebook and I was able to get plugged into this CrossFit affiliate group, made tons and tons of networks and connections as well. And then it was like one recommendation after the other, which again, I was blessed. And now we're again, very similar boat. So please do share kind of like that strategy or story as well. Okay. So, so kind of like finding the voice of your brand and the point of your brand mm -hmm. really aligns with helping you find the voice of your social media. And I think if you're a person that like me, dreaded using Instagram, posting on Instagram. It gave me anxiety and I felt a lot of pressure. And I found that the key to fixing that was actually finding my own voice. I started, it became like an art project to me. And I started posting things that were beautiful to me. And I started speaking like I speak, like just saying weird shit. And it really started to resonate with people. Yeah. Um, so just being you. Yeah, it's weird. That's it. There's, I mean, unless, you guys... unless you're a jerk, don't be yourself. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's the secret, the secret formula right here for all the listeners is just being you. Like if you, if you, if your brand and your, your, um, in your feed don't excite you and you're not clicking with it and it doesn't speak to you, start over, just start over. Hit the, um, hit the reset button. Because <laughs> it can really work. I know from both sides. Now I love it. Um, but anyway, so it just got, I put it in the hands of a couple salon owners. Okay. And, you know, and that was, and so you quote unquote slid into the DMs. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that. But, you know, less than you would think. It, people in certain industries, like, will take care of the marketing for you. Mm-hmm. People use Instagram and they tag your product when they use it, especially in my industry, hairdressers all follow each other. Right. And um, it was just kind of like spread like quick fire. Yeah. But it's the culture and the community. And there's definitely cultures and community within every industry, every business, because mm -hmm. we all share the same passion. Yes. So yeah, connect with with your industry, it will not let you down. Mm -hmm. So I do, I do have a, a business s question, right? As, as we're trying to break down certain things, um, a, a thing that I think is very, very important that doesn't get talked about a lot is the like, not necessarily the product development part, but like 
the cost, right? Yeah. So any tips on like how to price certain products, how, what, what to account for for your COGS, which is a uh, cost of goods sold, anything out there that you could chime in? Well, I had a mentor share with me that um, because there are so many factors in deciding, um, or there are so many factors that go into pricing a product, um, you should really be charging at least five times the amount that it takes for you to produce the product. And please understand that when you're just starting out making your own cosmetic product, um, it's going to cost more because you'll be making smaller MOQs, minimum order quantities. Um, so each unit on its own will, will cost more than it will eventually when you're making like 100,000 units at a time. So you can do a little bit of projecting in that department. Like if you're not making as much off of each unit in the front end, that's okay. Because the other factors to consider are when you're successful, um, you might want to use a distributor. Right. And there's a cost related with that. So it's hard to conceive of when you're like a tiny little baby brand and your shipping department is in your kid's toy room <laughs> that you might have to be factoring in like international distribution companies and the costs that go along with that. But you really just should. Right. You should be testing that success and you should be factoring in that price. So Absolutely. please not forget when you are pricing your product one do not give it an arbitrary price you cannot make a product a luxury product by making it obscenely expensive that's not how it works <laughs> but but do do factor in all of the things that go into operating the business yes absolutely and then how did you because i i do love uh the packaging as well so um, how did, how did you, again, from product and then now it goes inside the tube and it's sealed and then how, I mean, the designing, I knew, all of that. I knew from the onset that I wanted it to be in an aluminum tube. And I also insisted that it had um, a 100% post-consumer plastic cap because I don't really want to be in this day and age, be bringing new plastic into the world. Mm. Uh, and I wanted a recyclable product. So that just involved a lot of research. And I finally found like a tube, aluminum tube manufacturer that would print my design on it. Um, and then, so I, it's basically like you become a contractor, right? Yeah. I source the tubes. I buy the tubes. I have my designer. I work with my designer to make the branding for the tubes. Um, also, always have a copy editor. Don't, <laughs> don't print 20,000 units of anything without having a professional look at it. Also, always do research on professional regulation, like labeling regulation. Buy books about labeling rec regulation. Your chemist and certain other people in the line of people that are involved in making your product will have some idea, but you cannot expect your manufacturer to catch that you didn't put the volume of the product low enough on the tube. Like there are rules yeah. you need to follow. So anyway. Um, no, that's, that's all great tips. It sounds like you went through a few <laughs> renditions. I didn't exactly, I didn't exactly mess that up, but I'm just saying, things I put into practice along the way that I know will help right. you to so learn about that stuff, be, be in charge of, of knowing that. Um, so then I found a box manufacturer and had the box designed and printed. Mm -hmm. And then I have all of those components sent to the lab where then my chemist fills them. 
Um, so it's it's really there's so many moving parts that yeah when you're when you're not going to a one-stop shop when you can't afford to like go make a hundred thousand units in one go at a facility that can do it all you're going to be a contractor right but again you know what what i love about this conversation that we're having right now is that you're literally giving the insights of starting like the pre before you could even find a big contractor company to do all your fulfillment and distribution. This is kind of like the ropes you have to kind of go through. And this is all the learning. Um, yeah. And, and honestly, in, unless you are starting out your brand and you have like a hundred thousand dollars or way more to <laughs> throw at your project right you will be doing it like this and you might even be making it in your kitchen and but that's okay right because that's that's what we're here you're passionate about your product you're passionate about getting it out there yeah. and it, it's it's just something fun as well too at the same time for you um what uh, i do have a question what uh what do you think uh are the three most important things that helped you uh, with your business today? Um, one, doing everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, like I didn't do everything wrong. I, I did a lot of things right. And, and one of them was my perspective on when things went wrong. And that was, wow, I'm so glad this huge error on my boxes is occurring when my company is small enough so that it's not a disaster. Cuddles the green lights looking at the... Yeah. Like, wow, I'm so glad that um, this batch isn't like 10 million units. Mm -hmm. Th this error that occurred will never happen again in my career. Um, I think, I think like that mentality is super important if you're actually going to bring something to market because everything will go wrong at some point mm -hmm. and you have to find a way to be cool with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then what else? What that was that one? You said that was one. <laughs> kind of two, but wait, what was the question again? Uh, just like uh, uh, things uh, that'll help with your like your business. Any type of tools? Is there a program? You know that they should. You know if there's a top, yeah, tool, software program. Um, outside of reading, you know that helps you either even like manage, right? So are you using? what platform are you using to sell your product? You know, little stuff like that. Um, I, I have a Shopify store. Um, um, I'm just thinking, yeah, like learning as much as you can, even if you're not making your own product, having an understanding of, of what goes into formulating and, and all of the regulations that surround um, product manufacturing, you kind of can't be blind to anything that's happening um, because you're the only one with your name on the product. So mm. it's important to really have a deep understanding of what you're putting out. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is very, very key. And then now, Susan, let, let's go into, uh, I love this part of the program, uh, is, is, is the question aspect, um, kind of of like, what's kind of going through your head, what's kind of going through like the business right now that you have questions on that you've been like researching. And this is where we just get to share thoughts, strategies, et cetera. Um, you want to talk about like bottlenecks? We could talk about anything that's going on with your business. Okay, so stuff that like I 
I'm thinking about and that I want to achieve and kind of get support with. Yeah. And then okay. just like thoughts that maybe even just help clear. And then even just by talking it out loud, you know, there's, you know, there could be something that evolves from it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So here are some things you can pick and choose. Um, <laughs> I, I feel as though I could use a new and or larger manufacturing facility yes. uh, with broader capabilities. Um, I want to grow my brand and um, in order to create my brand on such a small scale, I, I really had to go with someone who's amazing, but that also um, can't um, keep up with my demand anymore. And also um, is like really slow to kind of develop new products with me. Mm -hmm. So basically like I need a new manufacturing partner. Um, that's one thing. And then there's always marketing. Right. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and discuss, uh, manufacturing some just like little tips. Um, yes, from, 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 I guess our, one of our discussions, um, I know you're going to a convention soon, mm -hmm. right? Can yeah. you tell us? I'm going to, that's also another hot tip. Go to conventions, meet some people. Um, I am going to the Natural Products Expo. Okay. And I'm I'm going in order to just kind of make connections with peers. Yes. But also, um, but also uh, source new packaging materials for future products and potentially um, leverage some of those connections to find a bigger manufacturer. Yeah, I mean, you. I think you put it on the mark there. Like when I went and was sourcing fabric for like the one piece shorts and leggings, I went to like a fabric expo. And so not only did they have fabric, obviously, but they also had, um, they had just all sorts of different accessories as well. But then here and there, you may find one or two manufacturers. But my biggest thing coming prepared was to make sure that I had a, the right questions to ask, but then also networking, like what you were talking about as well and asking questions. Um, so a, a big, big takeaway was asking them if they knew any manufacturers in their area. Um, and that's what really also helped out because a, I was in sportswear. So again, they sold specifically sportswear fabric. And so I'm like, well, there has to be, either a manufacturers purchasing fabric directly from them and, or there's other companies like myself that was also purchasing. So I just asked them if they had any recommendations, any cards. I was, I busted out the phone with the Instagram. Do you know their name handle, et cetera. And then I just did some homework, did some research, shot some DMS, uh, shot them emails. Cause you have to try to grab their attention and also called. So did Wait, everything. So I'm sorry to interrupt. You're yeah. DM, you were DMing manufacturers. Yes, you could find manufacturers on Instagram as well. Okay. Yeah. So th that's what I mean by like social media. It's just super, super powerful. And that's why, like, when you search on Instagram, Google, even maybe even on YouTube, might even have something along those lines of I'm trying to release a product. And so again, there might be someone in the similar shoes that are like, oh, I have this awesome, amazing product. And then, yes, you could see it that they're on the market. There's, there's, you know, they also maybe want to help in some way, shape or form, hopefully. Right. I'm as we're all our small business owners. I'm hoping that we're, we're all helping each other out. You know, there's, there's enough food for everyone to feed. Um, and even again, ask that question, Hey, is there a chance that you might be able to share or help me? I'm trying to find a new manufacturer 
who do you use if you don't mind sharing? And again, if you don't ask, then you don't, you still don't know. You're still stuck yeah. in, in the same boat by you yeah. not even asking. It's funny because I'm not afraid to ask, but I know that there, I will ask people and they will not want to tell me. Wow. You know, just, you don't know. That's all. <laughs> I know you do know, but when, once you try only a few, I want to see like 500 no's. <laughs> right. Before that, before all that. And then, which, which then goes into, um, so again, just, just marketing, right? So let, let's talk some marketing slash, uh, sales strategy, uh, on top of like what you're currently doing. And then I may just have, you know, just, let's just spitball some ideas. That's what we're here for. Okay, baby. Um, so, well, what I'm doing right now that just works great. Yes. Um, because I've, I've tried cold emailing and that, that does fine because I've been, it's easy for me to really narrow in on um, my audience mm-hmm. because they're a really specific group of salons, mm-hmm. clean air salons of which Sparrow is one. So it's very easy for me to be relatable when I email like other clean air salon owners because we want the same thing. Absolutely. Um, this is going to go into advice territory if anyone's watching, but um, don't send a generic email to someone. Research their business. I mean, it, when you get a generic email, what's the first thing you do? You just delete it. Right. Like, you need that you, personalized you, message. Yeah, like you can email 10 people an hour for a day, but it just, it can be generally some similar stuff, but you have to put your voice in it and, and you have to talk about specific details of their business. If, if you are going, if you want something from them, you have to give them that respect. But anyway, so what I found to be the most effective, even more effective than just emailing is DMing. People just reply so fast. And my strategy has been at this point, just lowering the barrier to entry by DMing people that already follow me. That's the lowest hanging fruit, right? Guys, are you listening? She just dropped the gem right there so i can go in and it seems much less like soliciting because i'm saying hey you know lucy thank you for following me yes you're beautiful or say something that you mean that pertains to their page um and then say i would love for you to try my i just say i would love for you to try the hair cream and if you're interested, I can send over a coupon code. Let me know. And then I put like an alien emoji and sign <laughs> that um, is good. use the alien emoji, guys. It okay. must be working. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It just you, it has to. No, but that, no. I was just I'm just messing with you. I know, like that's that's just that's your personality, right? Yeah. So that again, having your voice, your personality behind who you are. It's not a robot. We've gotten plenty of those. I mean, I still get them. Hello, sir, madam. Yes. Don't do that. (laughs) We would love for you to be a brand. Would you check out? I'm like, guys, you guys got to get better at this. So the per. I'm like, dude, let me help. (laughs) But again, it's also scaling. So how do you uh, as far as like employee wise, is it just obviously outside of the fulfillment? Is it just you right now? Cause again, th- this is all part of sales marketing strategy now, right? How do you grow? Because you cannot be DMing 24 seven, right? I feel like you might need a sales rep of some sort, or I love virtual assistants, the VAs to kind of help continue to grow. So let, let's kind of uh, take a deep dive there real quick. Um, I'm a one man army right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I plan to, um, hire 
in the spring, hopefully. Um, no, I I will be hiring full time people in the spring. <laughs> uh, language, look at it. she's already saying I will be. Yeah. Got to make it. Happen. Yeah. No. But, that, go ahead. In terms of like, um, you know, I need someone to take over my shipping department, and um, I think taking care of your existing customers is very important mm -hmm. you know i need someone that's like a customer care representative that can not only reply to to dms but can answer questions on email you know take care of troubleshooting with affiliates and all of that stuff so absolutely so there's the strategy there if, if i may chime in right yes. um is putting all those roles and responsibilities together because you've actually done every job right now because you are the one person team. So the tip here is to actually write everything down. I'm huge on SOPs, your standard operating procedures, making sure that you have all of that. And then in that case, then you could now say, hey, I am trying to hire a customer relations. Here's your roles and responsibilities, what I need you to do. But then you also have to set them up for success as far as here's our company values. Here's what we do. Here's our voice, right? So again, everything that's in you, you're trying to create a doppelganger per se, a mini me version, but then they all too, they, they also have to believe what you believe in and share your same mission and vision. So then they, they become Susan, right? They become Esprit as well. So that yeah. they could now have the voice, right? No, this is all you're laughing, but it's, it's, it's so true. It starts with you. It starts with you and portraying that energy, yeah. you know, to them and then just providing them that structure. But then again, it's that like back and forth of like, you say you have to train them to email them a certain way, right? Yeah. Um, make sure that you're, they're using the proper verbiage two at the same time. But I mean, that's the only way for you to scale just in general. Like again, Jeff Bezos isn't shipping everything, you know, just in general. Um, but, but again, it, it all formulates with that. And so again, you know, whether you hire right, uh, personnel and, or you go virtual assistant in that sense as well, that's like the, the starting point. And then obviously you also mentioned shipping, um, I do know there is this one company called ShipBob, and the only reason why I know about ShipBob is because one of my clients, Barbell Rescue, oh, from episode 001, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, make sure you guys tune in over there, but uh, he uses uh, ShipBob, and so he has all of his product ready, goes through ShipBob, they actually do all the fulfillment, mm -hmm. so and they're connected, they could connect you through your Shopify as well. So then any orders that comes in from your Shopify, they get, and then they do all the tracking stuff and then they, they take care of it. So they're just, um, they're a distribution warehouse. Yes. And then they, they have everything obviously yep, in their facility. So that could be also a little conversation. Uh, yeah. so what, why we have to consider um, this is Cost. part of what to consider when we're talking about prices, right? Oh, absolutely. That's why it, it all comes full circle. No, it, it totally does. Right. Um, but yeah, so again, I would, if you haven't looked into them or heard of them, I would probably check them out, um, as well to kind of, again, help you facilitate with that sense. But going back to some more marketing ideas, sales strategy aspects, um, what other ways are you trying to, uh, have you thought of to get your name out there? Um, I mean, aside from emailing and DMing, um, I have played with the idea of, um, finding affiliates outside of the industry, for example, YouTube influencers um, are people that I feel like align with my company values that might actually find value in the product. Yes. Um, sending it to them. 
Um, and I, you know, like a lot of those ideas I kind of put on hold because I had a inventory, like I sold out of inventory and had a little bit of a delay. Um, so I'm, I'm back in the saddle and I need, I need inspiration in this department. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you said it right there, right. In, in that sense. And, and right now, uh, I would, if you're not on TikTok, I would highly, highly recommend TikTok. Um, and then also probably utilizing TikTok, and I'm gonna, you don't have to do any crazy dance, right? It could be a easy tutorial. So TikTok has also now become like this really crazy, like tutorial and learning, uh, with some awesome music. Uh, so you just need to like what you were giving everyone else. You need to play around mm-hmm. and utilize TikTok. And then again, same, same advice you said earlier with Instagram, it's going to give you anxiety at first. But once you kind of figure out like how you're going to present things, it's literally, I don't want to say it's the same thing, but the platform is hot, you know, and so many of you, uh, it's a really, really quick way to get your name and your brand out there mm-hmm. in a shorter period of time, because that's where everyone's attention is. Why is it so effective? Why does it spread so much? Attention. Uh, every everyone's attention is on TikTok. So, and different age range and demographic. So it's just, you never know who you're going to meet, but the people that you're trying to reach are probably searching with hair, cosmetics, et cetera. And that's the line that you're in. So, um, are the TikTok video options like longer now? Cause I thought TikTok videos had to be super short no i think they have extended i don't know if it's two minutes might be but i know it's more than a minute okay absolutely cool so so i would definitely spend some time there and so again the the whole goal of this is not to give you eight different things to do and now your your head is just like chaotic it's like no no let's let's focus on tiktok because now you have instagram down right you're like oh yeah i could shoot out 10 dms and 15 minutes. Great. Let me learn TikTok. Let me spend an hour each day learning about it. Let me do one post a day. And it could be like, Hey guys, check out this cream. And then, (laughs) and then you fluff, right. With all the beautiful hair that I have. Um, yeah. So I would, I would say that would be my last tip would be checking out TikTok, utilizing that platform, Right. And then, um, as as you kind of continue to find when you hire that sales rep, we could obviously definitely talk more about strategy and how to actually implement and set that up so that when you are ready to hire that personnel, uh, that now they're taking control over that because that's what you want. And then again, you can now focus on the branding, the marketing and the messaging through these social media platforms, and then also working towards your different affiliates and or influencers. I think that's where you're trying to get at with like YouTube. So they're called YouTube influencers as well. Creating that network and connection to work with them to make sure that both values, right? Coexist together. Um, And then hopefully they could each share your message and then it'll just grow and spread like wildfire. So with that, uh, we are going to be closing up on the show. I do have a surprise for you, Susan. We have a rapid fire fun questionnaire that you don't know that I was going to ask you <laughs> and she's giving me this, the, the surprise look. Uh, so again, it's, it's super easy. Uh, it's five questions and it's the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? It's easy. It's fun. All right. Yeah. I'm asking you the question. So, uh, one thing you can never live without, and it can't be coffee. Okay. Um, well then it probably can't be tea. Um, I love weightlifting. Awesome. Uh, (laughs) yeah, it's first ones. Yeah. Uh, what do you do to manage your mental health? Um, I do meditation ish 
but it's meditation with manifestation leaning. Yeah. Um, I also, um, I don't know. I have a, I, I'm like a positive outlook kind of person. So no, that was, that was great. So, so you said, uh, meditation slash manifestation. Beautiful. Beautiful. What is your current obsession? Um, what is my current obsession? I mean, I know I have them. Um, okay. As, hopefully there's some editing in here because the fact <laughs> to mine, I'm going to think of it like when we get off. Um, but I think that pop in your head. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I still maintain the obsession of reading business books. That is. And that's totally fine. Who does it? We're always wanting to learn. So yeah. Yeah, all of my friends are just so confused by me, but it, it gives us joy. Goodness. It gives us joy. Right. Uh, the best gift you've received. Um, the best gifts are always just kind of like non-traditional and thoughtful, right? Like something like that makes you know that someone's paying attention to you, right? Right. Um, but having said that, nothing's coming to mind. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come back. I feel like we're doing family feud. Uh -uh. We got to come back to that question. So, um, All, what... <laughs> All right, last question, last question. What's a good rule you've learned from someone? A good rule that I've learned from someone. Um, <laughs> you're uh, reading your mind. No. <laughs> um, um, why is it so hard for me, Roy? I have no <laughs> um, well let's see. What was the first thing that came to mind when you heard that question? I don't know. I mean, my mom taught me like a lot yeah. of a lot of stuff about um, you know, just being a decent human and being positive. But um, I will take let's let's give it up for your mom then. For my mother, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Susan. It has been an absolute, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your journey with us. Uh, hopefully for all you listeners out there listening and watching wherever you are in the world, please make sure that you share uh, your insights. Uh, comment below. Tell us what you love. Uh, tell us more about like your key takeaways. I would love to go ahead and comment more. If you guys have questions for Susan, obviously all of her information, uh, all of her handles, and her social medias is going to be in below in the description. So we are here, right, to help you and guide you through your entrepreneurial journey. So thank you again for tuning in with Breaking Down Business. Susan, we would love to have you back as a guest, obviously, and want to hear more on, on the future success that you have. That'd be great. All righty. All righty. Cool.